Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we are gonna discuss about the Zepedo built-in shader. If you remember, almost two years ago, I also created a tutorial about the custom shader. However, since Zepedo already replaced it with the built-in shader, it's no longer available for download in Studio Guide. The built-in shader is so much better since we no longer need to edit the shader code in order to create two-sided shaders. That's why I created this tutorial to help item creators to know how to use the new built-in shaders. If you go to Studio Guide, you can find Zepedo built-in shader under making 3D items 3D Maya, then other, then Zepedo built-in shader. Before you can use this, make sure that you downloaded and use the latest Zepedo Studio Unity Project file version 3.2.12 or higher. Anything before this version will not be able to use this shader. So make sure that your Unity Project file folder is updated. Also, to set up proper expectations, this tutorial is only relevant with the current built-in shader. If they replace or make some changes to it, this tutorial may not be relevant to any future updates, so please manage your expectations. Let's now proceed with the tutorial. You don't really need to download a separate shader file. When you download the Unity Project file version 3.2.12, it already has the shaders included in its packages, thus the name built-in shader. When you create materials for your items in Unity, just select the built-in shader that you want under the shader drop-down options. As you can see in the guide here, there are a total of 8 built-in shaders that you can use for your items. I'm not gonna be discussing each of these, especially the hair alpha shader since that requires a separate discussion about hair creation. I'm just gonna show you how to create a double-sided built-in shader and how they look like. I'm gonna discuss the options that I normally use such as lit, cloth, fur, iridescence, and sparkle. I'm not gonna go through each of the settings for every shader since it's a lot of jargons. Please refer to the studio guide to know what each of the setting means. First, let me discuss about the fur shader. Zepedo used to have this old fur shader guide including a sample for normal map, however, it is no longer available for download. I'm using the sample for normal map from the old fur guide. You can create your own fur normal map using Adobe 3D Substance Painter if you have that. To create a fur material, go to the shader drop-down options, select Zepedo, then built-in, then fur. I usually leave the albedo map empty because I find that when I put a texture file there, it makes the fur look bad compared to when it has no albedo map. Let me import the texture of this boots that I created in Substance 3D Painter. Make sure that you change the texture type of the normal map to its correct category. I also uncheck the Generate MIP Maps option to reduce file size. I just use the sample for normal map then I put the normal map I created with Substance 3D Painter from my item into the fur map slot. Here, I will show you the difference of how the fur looks like with and without a fur map. Here is how it looks like without a fur map. You can adjust the color of the fur here. I will be using this as the fur map because it has that fur texture at the upper right corner as you can see here. If you also want to create this in Substance 3D Painter, you can go to Community Assets and download this file that I'm showing on the screen. I just drag and drop this file down in the fur map slot. You can see that it changes how the fur looks like. If you noticed, it made the fur look more prominent. Here, you can adjust the sliders to change the fur length, fur density, edge density, and other settings. I usually keep the fur length below 0.5 because if it's longer, it kinda makes the fur look bad. I don't really see much difference when adjusting the fur density, so I keep it at default settings. Same goes for edge density. Fur gravity is where you can set the direction of the fur path. Remember that X is for left and right, Y is for up and down, and Z is for front and back. If you want the fur path to look like it's pointing downwards, you can change the Y to a negative value. You can also adjust the occlusion color here. I don't see any changes toggling the fur occlusion strength so I keep it at its default value which is 0.5. For the rim light mode, you can change it to natural and you can notice that the rim light of the fur changed. 
You can play around with the settings since most of it are pretty much self-explanatory or you can check the studio guide if you need to familiarize yourself with each of these settings. For both the color greeting and render queue, it's preset to these settings that works best when the item is used in app, so please do not change them. Now that I'm satisfied with the fur material, let's go ahead and discuss the other shaders that I normally use with my items. For the fabric of the boots, I will use a double-sided shader. To do that, I will use the other options from the built-in shaders. Cloth shader is what I normally use for clothing items. If you notice, the lace of the ribbons is a one-sided mesh so the back faces are being rendered invisible with a standard shader. To fix this, we need to create a double-sided material using this built-in shader. You can achieve this by expanding that render state detail settings and select off from the cold drop-down options. You can see that the back faces are now visible when we change the cold settings. Cold setting determines which part of the mesh will be rendered visible. If you change it to back, it will make the back faces invisible and only the front side will be visible. If you change it to front, the front faces will be invisible while the back faces will be visible. Since we want both sides to be visible, that's why we changed the call mode off. As for the other settings under Render State Detail, please do not change the first three options as it may affect how your item will show in app. We can only change the call mode here but we need to leave the other three settings untouched. Now that I made the material double-sided, I can put my item textures in the albedo and normal maps. You can adjust the sliders for metallic and smoothness to create the kind of look you're trying to achieve here. I don't really use the other map slots here other than the normal and albedo maps so I just leave those empty. There are instances when I toggle the smoothness and metallic sliders higher and the back faces become lighter in color compared to the front faces. That is when I use the lit shader to fix that problem without sacrificing the metallic and smoothness settings that I want. You can instantly notice that the back face is relatively the same color, if not darker, compared to the front face. But for this boots, I'm actually aiming to achieve a silk-like texture so I am using the iridescent shader this time. I have here the screenshot of the settings that I did with this item so I'm just copying it. This is the settings that I used for this item, but if you would like to make it more iridescent, you can play around with the sliders to achieve the kind of texture you want. You can always refer to the studio guide to familiarize yourself with the purpose of each of those settings. Going back to this boots, if you noticed, I assigned a separate material for the bottom part of it. This is because I want the sole to have a rough texture which is different from the silk fabric. That is why I assigned a separate material for it and I am using the standard shader only since this doesn't need a double-sided material. Lastly, let's try this with the sparkle shader. If you want a glittery material, this is the shader that you can use to achieve that. You can adjust the noise size to achieve the glitter effect that you want.
That's all for the built-in shaders that I can discuss today. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I hope you learned something from me today.